The last video covered how to install a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus to your 3D printer using the TH3 direct wire kit. Today, we're gonna to do the software side of the install, which is actually flashing and loading OctoPrint onto the Raspberry Pi. Now, what this allows to do is control our 3D printer wirelessly from the computer, anywhere really, and uh, no longer will we have to load files on the SD card anymore to print. We can load and print online. We can also monitor things via a webcam. Uh, there's a lot of useful plugins that Octoprint offers, like that visualization, uh, among various other things. So let's dive in and get to installing Octoprint. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and go to octoprint.org. And that's gonna bring up the main Octoprint website where we can download our uh, boot file. So what we're gonna basically do is go ahead and exit out of this real quick. And we'll scroll down to the download link. We're gonna download Octopi 0. 0.17.0 and this is just going to hit allow so that we can download it and what this is going to do is this is going to download now the image file so that we can flash our SD card once that file downloads you can go ahead and just drag it to the desktop and then we can close out of all the windows um, <clears throat> we won't be needing the octoprint.org site for a while. The next thing we're going to do is open up the Belena Etcher app, and I'll have a link for this in the description. What this will do is allow us to flash that image file onto our SD card. We're going to go ahead and hit flash from file and find that octoprint, uh, sorry, octopi buster dot image. And we're going to make sure that we are choosing the SD card that we want. Um, as you see, I also have my external hard drive hooked up obviously don't want that and then you can go ahead and hit flash we're gonna to have to enter our computer password and that'll go ahead and it'll take probably two or three minutes to flash once that's done we can move on to the next step so once it's done flashing the image to the SD card uh, Belena Etcher will automatically eject the card so you can go ahead and remove it from your uh, SD adapter or wherever it's plugged into and put it back in so that we can actually access the files on the uh, SD card. You will notice that it will be renamed as boot. Uh, don't worry about that. And this looks kind of scary and complicated, but it's really not that bad. All we're gonna do is scroll down till we find the file that says, um, where is it here, octopi wpa supplicant.txt. And we're gonna to wanna to open that with Atom, our second app that we need. Uh, there will also be a link to the download in the description. This is the text editor, and this is how we're gonna set up Wi-Fi. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll on down until we see this WPA-WPA2Secured uh, network. You're gonna go down to where it says SSID and enter your Wi-Fi name inside the quotes. If you have a password, you're gonna put your password inside the quotes right there. Now the last thing that we have to do to make sure our Wi-Fi works is delete these hashtags in front of everything, um, starting with network, SSID, PSK, and then the one below it. Those hashtags act as comments and it tells the program to ignore everything after that. The final thing we're gonna have to do is comment out or remove the hashtag of the country we're in. And since we changed it from United Kingdom to United States, we're gonna wanna put a hashtag in front of United Kingdom so it doesn't read that anymore. It'll only read United States. Once you're done with that, you can save it and exit it, and we are all done with editing. All right, now that we got the SD card all prepped, we can go ahead and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. It is gonna be on the opposite side of your USB connections. Um, mine is taped down. I unfortunately didn't film that part, but, um, once you go ahead and plug in your USB card, you can also plug in your connector that goes from the USB port to your printer's USB port. 
And then of course, make sure your power supply is plugged in and it is an adequate power supply if you have not uh, done the direct wire kit. Now that we got that all ready to go, we can go ahead and simply turn the printer on, which in my case is gonna turn power onto the Pi, or you can just go ahead and plug it into the wall. But either way, we wanna power the Pi up and we're gonna go back to our computer we're gonna go ahead and load the octopi.local website and that should bring up our instance. So we loaded octopi.local and the first thing that we get is our setup wizard. I'm just gonna briefly go through this with you. Uh, if this is the first time you've ever set up uh, octoprint. This only happens once, so don't worry about that. Uh, this is just enabling access control. It's basically changing your username and password from the original um, stock Raspberry Pi firmware password. I'm just going to set mine to modified 3D and insert my password here. And you can set yours to whatever you want. It's just going to be your basically your login information for every time you try and load octopi.local. And we're going to save the password with Safari and hit the next button. Now configure anonymous usage tracking. I just always enable it. It basically just it sends data to uh, all the people that know a lot more than me. Uh, and same with the enable connectivity check. Um, I always just enable everything, uh, plug, plug in blacklisting. I don't really know what all this stuff does, but enable it, it doesn't hurt. Here's where we go to set up our printer profile. So we're setting up the Ender 5, which is dubbed Project Aries, um, and it is a Creality Ender 5. We can go into the next tab, and this is where we control our X, Y, and Z height. We can go ahead and modify that to fit our correct dimensions. And after that, we can hit the next button. With that being said, we are all done. So we can hit the finish. And we now have our instance of Octoprint loaded. Now that we got our instance of Octoprint running, the next thing to do is go ahead and load up a test print. I'm gonna go ahead and load a cube into the queue, and we're gonna print out a 20 millimeter test cube, just a short little one hour print, and see how she does. Loading up a file is pretty simple. Just go ahead and hit the upload button. Choose the file you want. In my case, it's the test cube. Hit choose, and the file is uploaded. To start the print, all you have to do is hit the load and print button right here, and Octoprint will start the print. So as you can see there, it's printing out great. This is Autobot Blue by Paramount 3D. Just doing a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter cube, but everything's working great. Octoprint's performing awesome. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Thank you for watching. Have a great one, guys.